Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel. Thank you, as always, for joining me. This week, I started, finally, making the Jessica jacket from Closet Core Patterns. I was away over the weekend, so I didn't get started until a couple of days ago. And I thought it might be interesting to kind of record some video as I went through the process. I am nowhere near finished. Um, it's a very slow sew, and I am a very slow sewer. Um, but yeah, I just recorded bits. It's certainly not a tutorial or an official sew along or anything like that. Uh, but it's a bit chatty, and yeah, so it might be nice to do something different for a change. So in a minute, I'm going to cut to footage from where I started on Wednesday, and. I will come back and show you where I've got up to today. I did about an hour sewing today, but I've had other things to do this morning. So yeah, a bit of an update in a minute. Before we do that, just a little reminder, as you know, Serious Readers have been one of my sponsors. And just very quickly, just wanted to remind you that there is currently an offer code that I have. It's SR419, and it gives you £100 off any of the HD range of lights and free delivery in the UK. They are lights that mimic daylight as much as it's humanly possible, so it's really good for accuracy, especially for those of us that sew, and it's a product that I love. In addition, we've recently been running a competition, and the date for notification from the winner is coming up this weekend, I believe. So just a little bit of a reminder, if you haven't entered that competition, now might be a good time. There will be a link below to have a look at the lights and the competition details if you've managed to get in just in time. Anyway, on to the sewing. Okay, so this is me on Wednesday. It is 12.37 and I am finally ready to start making this Jessica, or Jessica, I'm going to call it a Jessica jacket. Um, so, I have spent quite a lot of time getting all of this prepped and to be honest, it's still not entirely there, but the bits that need to be done um, from now on, I can do as I go. So, all my pattern pieces are cut out. Before I cut them out, because it's 100% wool, I didn't take them to the dry cleaners or anything like that, but I have steamed it like mad. So I've actually got next to me just here is my big ironing board. I don't normally have that ironing board in this room. I have one of those fold up wall mounted ones that lives just over there. But I had all this yardage and I wanted to steam the living daylights out of it before I got going. So hopefully it will have shrunk as much as it's going to or as much as I'm going to be able to get it to shrink so that if later on I do take the jacket to be cleaned I'm not going to get any horrors where suddenly everything's gone horribly wrong. Now on this pattern you're told to get weft interfacing. Now I know that I got all the right bits of interfacing required when I was originally going to make this jacket I think a couple of years ago from a tailoring suppliers but I have used the weft interfacing. So being a lazy kind of person, I have used standard woven interfacing. I would not use that horrible stuff that just sort of pulls apart. I have used woven interfacing, which, well, let's see, but hopefully will do the trick. So the majority of the pieces are interfaced entirely. I've chosen a black one. Um, and I have marked on there in chalk any of the markings that I need to do. So everything is fully marked up. Some of the pattern pieces are partially interfaced. The top of the sleeve is interfaced. This part where the interfacing meets the main fabric is pinked according to the instructions and you've got interfacing at the bottom. I've got all my markings on there. Then you also have this little bit of horsehair canvas at the top that you stitch on into the seam line, which I haven't yet done. Possibly you can see I've just pinned that, but I will do that very soon. And then you interface it a second time on this front triangle 
there's a lapel roll line that runs across the front there and where that is going to come across that is interfaced a second time so that's all done then there are some pattern pieces that you interface with knit interfacing and I thought I had plenty of knit interfacing until I came to do it and then I realized I didn't so this morning I have zoomed off to Leon's, my local fabric store, which if the traffic's behaving itself is only 15 minutes away. I walked in, I said, I'm not going to look at any fabric. I'm just buying interfacing. Wasn't entirely successful because, <laughs> because they've got some new wools in and I did see a really nice wool checked coating, but I was very good. I just took a photo of it. I had a feel of it, took a photo of it. I'll come back to that. Just a medium weight, again, black, just, I mean, I could have used white, you're not gonna see through it, but I might as well. Um, especially where you've got buttonholes. I hate that thing where you've used a white interfacing on a dark color and then you can see it when you cut through the buttonholes. Um, anyway, the knit is primarily for this pattern piece, which is the lapel facing. My lining fabric is all cut out and pinned to the relevant pattern pieces here. And that is a viscose lining. Somebody asked me in the comments why I don't like the acetate or said there's nothing wrong with acetate lining. Of course there isn't anything wrong with acetate lining. It's what's used a lot in ready to wear. But for me, I don't like the feel of it, but more importantly, I don't like the noise of it. I find it, it makes a noise when you're wearing it. And I, I just get some like that. Maybe I'm just a bit irritable. The other pattern pieces I have already cut out are my pockets. They just are inside the pockets and I've used just a cotton. That is the same, that's leftover fabric from the shirt that I made last week. Only other bit that I've done that's slightly different is my under collar. And I was in Abercorn recently and I saw that they had some moleskin fabric and it's brown it look might look like velvet it's got that same look and that's for the under collar and i just thought that might give it just a little bit of something extra once i've sewn these bits of canvas into the seam allowance you've got a roll line marking which is slightly obscured by my second bit of interfacing but there's a roll line marking here and you get some cotton seam tape, which you basically make a tad smaller than the measurement of that lapel line. And you sew it in with a bit of ease and that helps with this lapel. When it, where are we? It's so dark in here. I've tried to turn the light up on the camera because it is dark in this room. Anyway, where that lapel line is, the whole point of the tape is to help that naturally roll at that point because what you don't want to do is to be pressing that so it's a sharp crisp line that will look peculiar my tape is here eased in so it's a bit wibbly wobbly and then this last section here you hand sew in and i presume that that's because that stitching on the right side is going to be hidden by the lapel being turned over but obviously there's not as much folding over on that last few centimeters there so you do it by hand so that you can't see the stitching i'm assuming that's the reason why so i have now sewn my darts and pressed them so you've got one at the lapel and a bust dart which is coming up from the waist which I have done. So you sew those darts, the, the bus dart you cut up the middle and press open and you do that over a ham because obviously you are, we're not flat, even me. Um, so trusty ham has come in, my trusty pressing cloth which has got very mucky recently because I accidentally got interfacing on my iron. Um, so done all of that and then the next instruction is to set the roll of the lapel and it says to dampen a towel and roll it up to six millimeters 
How is that even possible? Anyway, I've dampened a towel. It is not six millimetres. Um, and basically, you it's not going to be soaking wet, just damp. You set that against that seam tape that has been taped along the lapel line, so that line that goes across here. You steam the bejesus out of it and then you set it to cool. Already made my first mistake. Luckily it's not a major one. I'm just starting the welt. So I've attached my facing onto my pocket and I've made my little welt. And I was about to line it up and I just luckily double checked that the thread markings that I made on the front for the jacket was on the right side. Now I thought that it should be on the right side as you wear it and I just whizzed up on the instructions and noticed that it's on the left. So luckily, as I say, it's not a major thing. So this is how we're looking at the moment. My lapels are naturally falling in the right direction after I did the steaming and all of that. This pocket is still open and hopefully you can see on the inside that the bus dart has been pressed open and there's another little dart up here that you probably can't see. And just quickly do this thread marking for this welt. Um, and I thought while I was doing that I would just have a little chat. It's quite nice actually because normally it's just me. I mean there still is just me, I'm just talking to myself. And as we know that's the first sign of madness. Um, but just a little update on the curated closet which is that you know we're supposed to be taking photographs of our outfits um, and everything that we wear for the next couple of weeks or so and as I mentioned I was away at the weekend and I had a feeling that that wouldn't happen while I was away and it absolutely didn't um yeah I didn't do any photographs of what I wore but what I was thinking is that and, and pretty much what I wore over the weekend was various combinations of jeans and t-shirts it was supposed to be a heat wave this weekend both in Manchester and in uh, Germany where I was in Ratingen which is just outside of Dusseldorf I can't say it was a heat wave um, but it was warm enough that it was t-shirts and if I took a jacket um, nine times out of ten I took it off. Anyway so my point is that when I've done the washing what I'm going to do is I'm still going to take photographs of the combinations of jeans and whatnot that I wore because I still think it will be very helpful and needless to say that means I've got out of the habit of taking the photos um, and I haven't done it at all since I've been back which is only been a day um, so I'm going to try really hard to remember to take a photo of what I'm wearing today and get back into the habit. Um, today's, do we call it even an outfit? But anyway, yes, what I'm wearing today is basically just a pair of jeans. When I say these are rolled jeans, they really are rolled. Um, I used to wear them in the late 90s. They are boot cut and I kept hold of them thinking that boot cut and flares would come back and sure enough I guess they have and I'm really enjoying wearing them and more importantly I can actually fit in them which is very nice and then this is an assembly line oversized shirt but I made it from this Nanny Iro fabric and at the time I didn't have enough to make the shirt as long as it is in the pattern because it's long enough that you actually have a pocket on it so I had to shorten it um, it's still oversized but it definitely doesn't have the pocket um, yeah I squeezed every last bit of fabric on this I seem to remember one of the things I like about it is that I literally used it salvage to salvage so on this seam I don't know if you can see the dots kind of stop and it goes into just the plain fabric and then on this side the dots go all the way around and it's just one of those little details only I know it um, but I quite like it okay so my welt pocket is now in place 
uh, I still need to give it a bit of a press and the welt itself is loose so I need to stitch that in. Just going to stitch the sides in by hand following the instructions. Um, the pocket bag is there and you just pink it because it's going to be all enclosed in the lining so don't need to worry too much about it. Um, you can right notice there are some little chunks out of my canvas here. So I found it almost impossible to put this in without getting this canvas bit of interfacing involved in the welts there. Um, I did it once and then just sort of cut around it and then the second time I tried to pin it out of the way but it was clearly not able to do that and then I got it involved again a second time. So I think probably what I will do, I've got enough of this, it's only a small piece so I'm going to cut another one and take this out put a new one in at some point. I'm not going to do it just yet but before it all gets enclosed. Um, there's nothing in the instructions about pinning this out of the way. I think it would have just been easier to add this bit of canvas, horsehair, whatever it's called, um, at this stage after this pocket had gone in rather than at the beginning. Um, in terms of the instructions, I would say, I can't remember what level they say this pattern's for, it's clearly not a beginner pattern. I would say that the instructions are fine if you've done it before. If you haven't done it before, I think you might struggle. But what you've got to remember is that they offer a course, a paid for course, uh, tutorial, whatever, to make this jacket. So you could argue they don't want to make it too simple because then you won't buy the course, will you? Or am I being cynical? Actually, it's probably me being cynical. So it is getting dark in here. I'm going to see how I do. Um, not sure what time I shall finish tonight. Okay, so it's Thursday morning. It is 10.20. I um, have already been up for a few hours. I was at the gym at seven. Came home at eight, had a coffee and a bit of an Instagram while I was gasping for breath. And then I walked the dogs. So yeah, I'm ready to go. I haven't had any breakfast yet, so I might have a break in a little bit, but I'm all right for the moment. Um, Last night I prepped a few of the pattern pieces to start these pockets on the jacket but I still need to do a little bit more of that. So I'm now at the point where the side panel and the front panels have been joined like that. So that is the front with the lapel. Um, this here, this open section here is going to be the pocket. So when you join this seam here, you have to be very careful that you haven't got a gap there, that those two pieces that are kind of loose butt right up against each other. Um, but that has all been done and pressed. I think I could probably do with pressing this little corner here again to get that a little bit better. I am not so worried about this corner here because it's going to be hidden behind the lapel. So I'm just going to get on with it really. I am, this dress I didn't make, um, it's one I bought and I've been dying to wear it. Um, I bought it in the summer at the shop where my daughter Queenie was working at the time. She's not now because she's graduated. She's working full time in a school. Um, shop in Bristol called Mays and we were very lucky because they were just having their sale. So this is 100% merino wool and was reduced from £95 half price. So I think, what was that, just shy of £50 for a merino wool dress is an absolute bargain but it hasn't been cold enough to wear it yet. Um, I like the, the sleeves sort of slightly I don't know what we call them, lantern sleeves? Um, anyway, puffy. Um, so I like it very much, I like the colour, I've been waiting for it to be cold enough, it is definitely feeling a bit cold. Um, 
It's one of the reasons why I've been looking for a wool type or a sweater knit type fabric because I really like knit dresses. Um, this, I would say at the moment, is it's a higher neck than I would normally go for and it is slightly tight around the neck and I am finding myself doing this a bit. Uh, but Maybe I can just stretch it out. I, I, I don't like the sensation but also I don't find it to be particularly flattering for those of us who are a bit chinny. Um, yeah, and uh, in time, I haven't really worked out how I'm gonna style this, because obviously it's just a big blob of fabric, um, but I'm gonna look at that, and I've got it in mind when I'm looking at all the images for the curated closet. Um, at the moment, I'm not quite ready for tights yet, and I'm probably not going to go out today. I mean, I could, but I, I don't think I'm going to go out today. So, very inelegant. I'm wearing it with socks and my Ugg slippers. Uh, but there's only me here. Nobody else knows, nobody else cares. I think I've said before, even though, on days like today, even though I'm not gonna be seeing anybody, not even seeing my husband, not that he, would really care um but i'd still like to at least i mean not make a massive effort but i'm not somebody that can wear joggers for any length of time or like leggings if i go too casual it affects my mental health i don't know why but i start to feel quite down so i might do like leggings and a scrappy old hoodie or a jumper or something for a day or two if i do it beyond that it really makes me feel quite low so i try to kind of get a balance between obviously not being dressed up for just a day sewing but at the same time feeling like i've made something of an effort i don't know i'm not a psychologist i don't know why that is but it is me anyway enough waffle i'm just going to get on with this and um see how i go Okay, so it is now about one-ish and all I have managed to achieve so far is one completed pocket, which looks like this. Um, yeah, all fully functioning. Looks like this on the inside. Again, the seams are just pinked. I've curved off the edges of my pocket. I just prefer it that way. Then you don't get kind of just lint caught in the corners of your pocket. So I'm thinking that now I have done it, the going the second time round should be a lot quicker. Okay, I'm making progress. I've got both pockets in. Second pocket was much quicker. I think it took about 20 minutes. Um, did have extra pieces to cut out the first time round, but anyway, super quick. And then I've sewed the backs and then the sides to the back. So I have a completed body a shell so those are my pockets are now in and um, I've got that center back seam which has a vent but it is at the moment basted shut just there um, and I've turned up at the back which is all as per the pattern it looks like that on the inside and the shoulder seams have been sewn so the shoulder seams there is a little bit of easing because the back seam is a little bit longer than the front. That's quite standard in a well-drafted jacket because you need a bit of ease and movement around the shoulders. Um, and you put a bit of stay tape on that seam. So it tells you to do it in two passes. I think you're actually supposed to hand sew it first. I did it all in one go, but I don't tend to have a problem with easing things in. Um, so I think anybody who's done that kind of thing wouldn't sorry, rogue thread wouldn't need to do it um, necessarily in two passes so I've done all of that I've pressed it it does say to be careful when you press that shoulder seam that you don't move your iron too far into the back area where they've drafted that extra fabric because you don't want to steam it down so I'm ready at this point the next stage is collar I think I might have said I like making collars so I'm looking forward to that got a bit of my knit interfacing to go on there but I thought this is a perfect time to try it on and I have just done this so I know what I think 
And what I think is, it is a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit on the small side. Now these sleeves are quite big, but then on the other hand, it's going to be a winter jacket, so I don't want to be unrealistic. Put a pin where the single button will be, just to give me an idea, so that I can just sort of hold it in place. Now, bearing in mind, this hem here hasn't been turned up, but this one at the back has, so that's sitting a bit strange. Um, I think my overwhelming, overwhelming feeling is it's a little snug, but only just. I can't remember if I've said this is a size 10 I've made. Um, I'm going to keep it like this because just purely on a personal basis, I have, because I'm now doing all sorts of exercise and things, I have been very gradually losing a little bit of weight and I'm concerned that if I make it a little bit bigger and I continue to lose the weight, I'm going to regret it. And at the moment, this would still be pretty comfortable, um, albeit the sleeves, perhaps with something as baggy as that might not work. I like where the bust darts are sitting. I feel like that's coming to the right end. You know, it's not right up to the apex of your bust, which is not what you want. You want it to be, you know, a couple of inches or so below. I like where that's sitting. Yeah, so far, so good. Um, I've just remembered that I have things on tomorrow. Well, I've got the osteopath tomorrow, so I don't know if realistically I will get that much sewing done tomorrow. So I will see. I think it might be over and out for this kind of work in progress, unless I come across anything tricky or interesting along the way. So I might say goodbye now and then leave the rest and pick the video up where I've got to. So as promised, here's my update. And I will say it is typical that yesterday I said that I don't like to wear leggings and now here I am in leggings. I went to the osteopath this morning and leggings really help because she gets you in all sorts of funny positions. And when I came to put this on earlier to see how it's fitting, I thought actually it, it's a lot clearer to see when you've not got you know, complicated clothes on, and you're dressed like a mime artist. Um, so I thought I'd stay like this. So the bit I got to is I have now added on the facing, which is a little bit tricky because you have to navigate the all these little junctions here you've got to deal with. So you put with this pattern, the way they get you to do it is you put your under collar and the collar stand for that under collar. You attach that to the jacket itself and then you attach the upper collar and the upper collar stand to the facing, which is the front, this whole front section here. And this is the one that has the knit facing, so that gives it more flexibility. Then it's attached to that little bit at the back. Don't forget, of course, this is going to be lined, so that's what the lining is going to attach to. And then, yes, yeah, so then you attach the upper collar and the collar stand to that section. And then what you do, remember, look, that's my under collar with the brown, I'll do it, that's better, with the brown moleskin. And then what you've got to do is wrong sides together, you pin those two things and sew them, which can be, if I turn it inside out, can be a little fiddly because you've got these sort of junctions that need to be sewn together very accurately. There's a lot of clipping, a lot of pressing, a lot of getting your point turner out. I would, if you're going to do anything like this, you really do need a proper point turner rather than just bunging you know, like a pair of scissors or tweezers up there. You've got all of these junctions that you're matching on both the facing slash lapel piece and the jacket. And then you've got all the, the clipping to do and then turn it out. So I've got that far. I have turned it out and shoved my point turner into my points, which may not be quite
quite as good now, I'm turning them back. Um, and then the next stage is to establish where that roll line is for the lapel and put it on a ham or something like that and steam it in that position so it will sit nicely in future. Okay, so you can see it's sort of still not rolling naturally because it hasn't been steamed. And I need to do things like make sure that these are turned over in an identical way. You know, if I had that one turned, you know, just a little bit, so it was quite narrow and the other one wider, you would notice. So they need to kind of be properly turned over. It's definitely helped by the fact you've got that seam tape hidden on this side. That will help it that we steamed earlier. I will also need to stitch the facing and the outer jacket together through, do a little blind stitch through the seams, which I'll do later on today. But this is where I'm at. No sleeves yet, nowhere near. Let me do something to get my hair out of the way. Nowhere near sleeves yet. Um, yeah, so sleeves are next, but I think it's looking quite nice. Remember that is still roughly stitched, just basted together at the back there, so there will be a little bit of movement at the back. But bearing in mind, I made no changes to the fit whatsoever. I think with a bit of judicious pressing and getting this to all, see that's facing's not sitting properly, getting this to all sit properly. I think it's looking really smart. I love the colour. I love the fabric. Um, obviously, I don't know when I will get it finished because, yeah, sleeves next and then all the lining to do. So it's still quite a bit of fiddling about. But do you know what? I cannot wait to get it finished because I just know I'm going to wear it all the time. Um, it's, yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's turning out so far. So... Yeah, hope Becky thinks I've done her fabric justice. Okay, everyone, thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.